Imagine you are sitting on a gold mine of data, but without the right processes, it's just a pile of rocks. How do we turn that raw data into actionable insights? Today, we will explore the fascinating journey of data through its life cycle on how it gets started from data collection, data ingestion, data cleaning, transformation, and beyond. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Satyajit Patnaik. For those who are new to this channel, let me tell you that I have 14 years of industrial experience and I do videos on data and AI. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe it. Let's jump into this video. If you are passionate about data or just curious about how it shapes our world, you are in the right place. In today's video, we are diving deep into the data life cycle a crucial framework that helps data engineers manage and harness data effectively. If you are a complete data engineering beginner, you want to get into data engineering, then we have a beautiful course for you. Azure Data Engineering Masters that we have recently launched on Udemy. If you want to explore the program, the link will be in the description. And if you want a coupon code, just write down Azure DE in the comment section and I will send you a coupon code immediately. Without further ado, let's get into the video. And in this video, we are going to talk about what data lifecycle is. See you in the video. Hi, let's try to talk about data lifecycle. Data lifecycle is the journey data takes from its creation to its eventual archival or deletion process. As data engineers, we are responsible for managing this journey to ensure data is collected, stored, processed and delivered effectively. Now, typically, the lifecycle is of five different stages. So, on your screen, you have a very typical data engineering life cycle. Now, what are the different five stages, five key stages? So stage one is, I'm not talking about generation because generation is not pretty much included in the data life cycle, right? Because your data could be generated by users. It could be generated by sensors, application. Now they are not typically a part of your data life cycle. So data engineers life cycle starts from ingestion. So the first part is ingestion. The second part is basically storage, storage, where you're actually deciding where to store. And then the third part is processing. The fourth part is transformation. Now processing is not visible here, but processing is nothing but how your data is being processed by cleaning, validating and structuring, right? Handling missing values, deduplication, format conversions and multiple other things. And the fourth one is transformation. So transformation basically is converting the data into a format suitable for analytics or AI machine learning, such as aggregations, joining, or let's say enriching data. And finally, the fifth part is nothing but your delivery. So I will write it down as delivery or serving. So let's try to talk about each of these processes. So ingestion, what is ingestion? Ingestion is pretty much nothing but the data enters from multiple systems. Let's say your company has different systems, right? Uh, let's say your some of your data is coming from some IoT devices. Some of your data is coming from some CRM devices. Some of your data is coming from some uh, SharePoint. Some of your data is coming directly from a third party vendor. So your data is basically entering the system from multiple sources, right? So the first part is ingestion. You're basically ingesting the data into your own pipelines. So we need to create pipelines to collect data reliably, whether it's a batch daily sales data or streaming, which could be your real time user clicks. Now, example, we can use Azure Data Factory to pull data from a REST API into ADLS, right? So now you have this source data, then storage. 
Storage is storing. Where do we have to store? What do we need to choose? Do we go for a data lake or a data warehouse or a database? So this is what you decide. A data warehouse or a data lake or a database. Now, we as a data engineer are also responsible for choosing the right storage solution. Example, ADLS for raw data, Azure SQL database for structured and ensure that data is organized and secured. Then comes processing, where we are actually processing it by cleaning, validating and restructuring. We need to use tools like Databricks or ADFs. Uh, mapping data flows to process data effectively right um, fourth is a transformation transformation is converting it into a format that is suitable for analytics where we need to write some complex sql queries or pyspark transformations to create meaningful data sets and finally we have the delivery layer where we have to uh, make sure the data is ready for delivery whether the data is going to be used by the analytical team sorry the analytical team or machine learning team or uh, we need to do some reverse etl so basically your data is ready right so that's pretty much a, a data life cycle now uh, let's try to take a real world example right so let's say um, i'll try to go down and let's say i will try to write down a scenario now let's say the scenario is a retail chain wants to analyze customer purchase patterns to optimize inventory. Let me write it down. A retail chain um, wants to, sorry, sorry. A retail chain wants to analyze let me just copy it from the other link retail chain wants to analyze customer purchase patterns to optimize inventory right so what we need to do we need to get started with the first process which is ingestion right so we need to collect all the transaction data from point of sale systems and online orders via Azure Data Factory, right? So using, let's say we have some data sources, we can actually get started using ADF, right? Okay, then we can actually store the raw transactions in let's say ADLS, so let's say I'll try to have like a storage machine where I have ADLS and then we also have let's say another Azure SQL database right uh, for storing the uh, structured data and then we have this processing layer let's say we are processing it using a uh, Databricks uh, to clean data to remove in incomplete transactions and etc and, and of course we will be transforming the data aggregating the data using PySpark and finally the data will be ready either for the BI team let's say for building some dashboards or reports or the data is ready for the machine learning AI team for using the models uh, so, so for using the data for cre creating some predictive models right now this storage part the internal thing could change depending on client to client depending on what strategy do you need do you want to implement a data warehouse a data lake house or a database uh, do you want to implement medallion architecture so you have to take care of all these things and that's exactly how a basic architecture looks like what are some of the key considerations in the data life cycle well as data engineers we need to keep these principles in mind across all the stages one is going to be scalability very important scalability second is reliability and third is security scalability reliability security anything else 
uh, well governance is a part of security i would say but let me write it down as a separate point governance anything else um cost efficiency yeah so what what do you mean by scalability can your pipeline handle 1 million records today and maybe um few billion records tomorrow yes then your system is scalable reliability are these uh, error handling mechanisms to prevent pipeline failures security is very important concern are you protecting sensitive data like pii with encryption and access controls are you complying with uh, regulations like gdpr or ccpa talking about cost efficiency are you as a data engineer optimizing storage and compute resources on azure to avoid unnecessary costs right so that's basically data life cycle in a nutshell we have now understood the journey data takes and the critical role data engineers play in managing it right let's try to jump into a few other topics in this module in the next video see you